Hi, I'm Andrew from The H Factor and strategize.online and today I'm talking to Eldon from Diagnose Medical. Hi Eldon. Hello Andrew, how are you going? Good, thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about your business before COVID-19 hit? Sure. So a bit about us first. So the business itself is called Diagnose Medical. It's a medical innovation uh, startup that spun out from a Stanford Innovation course when I was over there in the US in 2019. So my background is engineering and I founded the startup with three other co-founders who are um, surgeons in ENT, so ear, nose, throat, and they are, all three of them are US based. So um, the product itself is a diagnostic tool that helps to distinguish between viral and bacterial uh, infections for the sinus um, at the primary care, so the GP office, to reduce unnecessary amount of antibiotics. R&D has become a bit of a nightmare because like I said, it's a hardware product. So suddenly we, we had a team of engineers and interns that were all working together in a co-working space. And unfortunately um, it's moved to, you know, people had to work from home and the co-working space closed. So it's quite unfortunate. So we, we had to deal with that. And then on top of that, it's a hardware product. So whenever someone makes it, no one else can see it, it's part of the team. So it's, it makes things a bit less organic. So that was the first thing. Uh, that was a lot tricky because we are, build, we, we are building physical product that you know everyone around the team needs to be able to interact with, and that that, 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 that was one of the first challenges. Second one is the usability testing. That that's a complete no-no at the moment because it, the test itself uses nasal mucus. So and COVID nineteen nasal mucus. <laughs> no, <laughs> just you don't want to go into those logistics at this point in time. And um, the friends and family round was, is also a bit tricky. It's been delayed because especially on the US side of things with my co-founders, things are looking pretty bad at the moment for my, um, on, on their side, you know, public health point of view and also economic side of, uh, of things as well. So yeah, those are the three main problems we have to deal with and had to deal with. What, are t what opportunities have you identified that you are looking to pivot towards um, as a result of these challenges? Yeah, so um, that it took us a while to do that actually, and we, we had to get some we, we, we got some great advice and some great insight. We we had some mentors through our by design network, through you know Space Cube, the, the Adapt or Stop program. We've got the plus eight panels. Um, some of the, the in relation to to those three problems, one one of it was about you know extending our runways on how how much cash. So I didn't mention most of our funding so far has been bootstrapped. Yeah, um, the co-founders in their own money. So the advice was, you know, extend the runways, reduce the amount of cash that we're using at the moment, especially if we are, you know, spending the amount of cash but not getting the same results. So it's, there's no point to slow down things a bit. Yeah. And um, another great advice was from um, Isabel during one of the plus eight um, panel discussions. She was saying, you know, we can actually take advantage of how things are really slow at the moment to do more cust customer discovery and interviews. And we didn't really think about that because people who would otherwise be extremely busy are not so busy anymore. Yeah. Um, for example, elective surgeries are all, all you know, uh, cancelled and closed down and ENT yeah. surgeons are, are free now to chat and GPs are doing telemedicine, teleconsultations and it's slightly less busy than before because they can actually take your calls and talk to you to you know, do a bit more customer discovery interviews and understand you know, a bit more about the need that we're looking at. And um, the last piece of advice was, you know, to, to stay flexible and embrace sort of remote work, even if it's unfortunate, it's a hardware, everyone needs to be able to see it, touch it, feel it, play with it. Um, you just have to embrace it and see how things go. So that's sort of the three things we had to keep in mind to remediate those three problems we're looking at. And um, yeah, those were things we, we, we didn't really think about because, you know, startups is go fast, fail fast, but now everything is very slow and you get a bit of time to think about it a bit more interestingly. So, um, on, on the comments of the runway, so we, we've, we've revamped all our finance and cost structures. Well, we had a bit of help from um, at Better Lab Ventures and um, the, the mentors from there is just looking at, um, you know, extending our runways for three months, the worst case, six months, eight months, and, you know, so we can survive. Um, on the other, on the other hand, I'm doing less R&D myself and more customer discovery because 
found out, you know, it's the perfect time to do this. It's, it's very slow and people are free. So I'm yeah. doing that. We're knowing a bit more. It's a bit, we're knowing a bit more about, you know, the why we're doing all of this and why do people care about what we're doing. And um, also we've, um, based on the advice, we've, we've swapped some of our engineers into part-time now. So, and they're staggered across the week as well. So sometimes they work together. Sometimes, you know, if someone needs to do something first, for the other one to start so we work on separate days and part nine and um yeah it's a bit of a logistical nightmare to just make sure we clean all the equipment disinfect everything and then pass it on but yeah we're just adapting i guess wow so how will you adjust to make all the changes that you need to make to to sort of get through to happier days a little later down the track yeah um good question so um i think for us at the moment is to stay to, to be very clear on what we can do and what we cannot do during this period. Um, there's everything, it, it's that understanding that it's not just us that's affected and everyone else around as well, all the other businesses. And it's appreciating that um, maybe some of our goals are, are not achievable this year and push them to the next year. Maybe some new goals can be done now that we haven't even thought about. So it's all about, um, a bit of introspection, I would say, and get, getting advice for a lot of people who've done this before. People have gone, you know, people who've gone through startups, challenges, challenging times, you know, uh, the economic crisis, for example, or other problems that may be happening around the world as well, they had to go through that. So talking to those people, talking to a lot of people, I, th I find helping me, and helps me in general. So. Mm, that's awesome. You mentioned before that you had received some mentoring through the Plus 8 program and through Better Labs. I'm just wondering what do you think a mentor relationship can offer people looking to overcome your types of business challenges? Uh, absolutely. So from my point of view, mentors bring immense value. So usually there, there's three things that um, mentors I find bring a lot of value to, to, to businesses and startups in general. The first thing is experience. They've lived and breathed that um, sort of space before they've overcame challenges went through tough times some that succeeded some that failed and learned from their failures as well and um, they're able to pass that on to you more better than any book any course any youtube channel you can ever watch so that that's that's one of the great values i can find for mentor the second is networking introduction and um, they have you know vast amount of contacts people you've never dreamed of they, they, they know and um it, it's People are busy, right? So those people you're trying to get in touch with, advisors, VCs, investors, executives, most of the time they're getting, you know, hundreds of thousands of emails coming through. And when that person, when that email comes in, that introduction comes in from, you know, your mentor, which is someone they trust and respect, they're more likely to get, gonna get back to you and, and start off with a really good relationship. And um, the last bit is diversity. And, and I'm really pro diversity in anything. Um, whether it's gender, whether it's age, whether it's culture, whether it's skill set, profession, everything, because um, you know, um, I think you'll, it, it adds a new flavor to your business because you know, people who have similar skill set to yours just think the same. It's like groupthink, and suddenly we have someone from a completely different background and just looking at a completely different direction because that's important for him. And that's something you never thought about, and it gives you that complete 360 of you know what to look about. So diversity in my mentors as well is something I look for. So that, that's the three things in what mentors and, and people from, I had Andrew from um, um, Startup um, is it Startup W, I think it's called, and as my mentor for Adapt, Don't Stop, and we had previous meetings. And it was really helpful, even though he doesn't come from medical innovation, just very relevant to what I'm doing. So Awesome. Thanks very much for your sharing your story, Eldon. Um, really appreciate that. And hopefully there's something there that other businesses can take and learn from. Thanks very much.